Hi, I'm Garrett. Welcome to IDC Woodcraft. This video is for the beginner CNCer who's just getting into CNC routers or machining centers, any kind of work center, that's what the whole thing is called, where you have to actually clamp your piece down. What I want to talk to you about is super duper important because it's going to like uh, stop a lot of frustration that you will have. What I want to teach you is how to think about work holding so you don't crash your machine. And unfortunately, sometime in your CNC career, you will crash a machine. I've done it many times as a machinist in my past. I'm not, we're talking, you know, two hundred, $300,000 machines. It's kind of an inevitability eventually, but there's nothing more frustrating as a beginner. You're like, okay, I got my design. I got the part on the machine. And you hit the start button and the tool runs into a clamp and breaks the tool. Very frustrating. So I want to help you avoid that. Let's dive right in to teach you how to think about when you're designing a part and when you're clamping it down. Let's go. I am going to talk about three things here. First of all is machine motion in the X axis and the Y axis. The second one is machine motion up and down, how the head goes up and down around your workspace or to your workspace. And the third is clamping, robustness of the clamps, placement of the clamps. When I am setting a part up on a machine, I create this mental space in my mind of how this tool is going to move around. And it's actually really easy to create. So we're looking right now at the X direction and Y direction. And the space I have to create is from the home position of the machine, which is where it's at right now, to the furthest left cut along a straight line. So basically, I am drawing a mental line from the point of the tool, actually the widest edge of the tool on the outside, to the outermost cut that would be on the outermost edge of that path that's being created. And then, of course, compensate in your mind for the diameter. So if you're using a one inch diameter tool, you have a half an inch off this cut that you just want to keep in your mind as a clearance space. And then I draw another mental line from the lowest point here, the furthest, furthest the most positive point of the cut, which is the bottom of the C. And I'll draw a line to the bottom of the furthest cut over this way. And I continue that on, like this, this little wire to these lights, it comes off the edge. So I have to keep in mind, now I've got another line that goes this way. Let's just use a piece of wood as a diagram here. So I got another line that goes this way. And then it comes up to the corner of this light, the very top of this light. Let's get a zoom in on this a little bit. Then I have the top of this light. So now I've got a path that's coming over like this, over like that, up to this edge here, up to this bulb, up to the top of this bulb, up to this wire, and then home. So kind of a strange shape I've created. That entire pathway, I like to keep free from any kind of clamps whatsoever. That way, no matter where this tool goes, it is not going to strike anything that's going to cause damage. So that's the first thing we need to think about is to create that envelope in the, in the Y and the X axis. The second thing we need to think about is motion in the Z direction. So currently what we're looking at is the surface of the workpiece and over here is the machine, the uh, router bit tip. So what we have to keep clear is everything from this point here and the width down to the plane within that first envelope that we created in our mind. This is particularly important because most programs that generate G-code, the code that actually cuts your workpiece out, move the tool to a Z position first and then move the tool over to the XY start point or reference point that it's going to be doing its work from. In all my years of machining, I never understood this because when you have multiple workstations set up, you always want that 
XY to be over the part before any Z action starts to take place to make sure you're clear of all your work zones. So I want to demonstrate this by just doing a quick run of this particular program. Now what I've done is I've taken the whole body of the program out and I just left the beginning moves in place. And what you're going to see when I hit the start button is the Z is going to come down first and then it's going to come over. So let's just hit go. Watch the tooltip. So you saw it go down in Z and then come over. For the life of me, I have never understood that. And I remember when I was dealing with the CAD CAM guys and they delivered programs to me that would do that. And I have to go back to them and I said, you've got to figure this out. Eventually they did. Now VCARB, that generates my G code right now, I am going to figure out how to make that change as well. But let's move on to clamps now. So that covers the second thing that we wanted to cover the machine motion around the part. Now the third one is robustness of clamping. What we have here uh, are the clamps that were provided by Bob's CNC. This is a E4 CNC machine and these clamps are quite adequate for this job because I'm using such a small tool and that doesn't create a lot of force nor does it create a lot of vibration. You want to keep in mind that if you are using a big tool or you're hogging out uh, more material and the speed of your tool, you want to keep that in mind as far as work holding. Now you're going to have to feel that out a bit. However, I have found that these clamps have been adequate for virtually everything I've done so far, even with a tool that's an inch and an eighth in diameter. But just keeping things locked in place. I've used the board back here against the stop. I've used the board on the side here and stopping against the sidewall. And then I've got a little block here that's got it, the whole thing locked in. So this part is not going to move. This clamp is a little bit loose at the moment. Um, obviously the part's done, so it's going to come out. So I'm not worried about that. So the robustness of your clamps depends on the heaviness of your cut that you're taking, the speeds that you're applying to the machine. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. I am inside of VCarve with that program that I've designed up. You notice it's sideways. That's turned sideways so I can orient the part in the machine properly so I can see it the way I want to. I'll do another video on orientation because that's a very confusing subject for a lot of people, especially if you're just getting into it. However, what I want you to take note of is what the program will do when it generates its uh, motion. So I am going to have this actually run the part. Well, this is as far as I need to go. I want you to look where my cursor is at now. You see the circles popping up. That's the zero point reference. And you see these red lines that are coming through. That's the rapid path that the tool is going to take. And so what I do know is my tool is not going to wrap it into a clamp. I have a clamp at the lower right of the part right here and at the upper left of the part right here. So everything is clear. What the point I want to show you here is your software is going to show you the tool paths that are going to be taken, but it's not going to show you the tool path from the home position, which is down here. Most of the time, a CNC program that's written by software will bring you over to your zero point here and end at the zero point, and so you can consider all your work inside the, the box that's created as we discussed earlier. The other thing it does not show is the Z relative to the home position, but it does show, as you can see here, let me turn that right, the Z moves while it's doing the work. So this is approximately a 0.12 of an inch. So all the red is the rapid motions, all the green are the feeds into the part. So you can see everything above that is clear. Um, so that's really what I wanted to show you that your software is going to show you your tool path and then of course you can generate the tool path and everything looks great and pretty I got to generate both tool paths to show that 
Um, let's do it like that. There we go. And pretty it up just a little bit by changing the color to Christmas red. How's that? There we go. And so it is showing. That's because it's highlighted on a different. There, we'll just get both of those in there. There we go. Merry Christmas to you. As I was editing this video, something else popped into my head that was really important that I have to throw in real quick. But let's rehash and then I'll get to that. The first thing you have to keep in mind is the work area that your machine is going to be moving around in. Basically draw a box around the outermost edges of all the cuts all the way to the home position. And if you keep clamps out of that path, you'll be in good shape. Number two is the Z motion comes down and then moves over. That's the way most software is right to program. So anything behind the part, you have to keep clear as well above the zero plane of your part. And the third thing, of course, is the robustness and uh, positions of your clamp and holding your workpiece in so it's solid. The last thing that, that's kind of important to keep in mind, you want to take into account the depths of your cut Meaning if this piece, this tool is going to come all the way down through this material, you want to make sure that the tool itself is going to be able to clear in that area. Um, you're going to also want to make sure that all the other elements of your tool are going to clear your clamps as well. So this nut here is an inch in diameter. The, the body of the router is uh, two and a half inches in diameter and it's uh, whatever dimension up there this whatever dimension to here to here so all that has to kind of be in your mind as you're getting ready to set up your part and run it what I have just taught you is something that's actually rarely taught because it's kind of an afterthought in machining education you know in a lot of the videos I've seen clamp Clamping and work clearances, it's just not something that's discussed that often, but it's really vitally important to your CNC operations and experience overall. I mean, at the end of the day, we can deal with scrapping a part, we can deal with breaking a tool, but when you wreck a machine and it's down because a part's broken on it, and you got to wait for another part, and you feel like it's your fault, you know, that you should have seen it coming, there's nothing more frustrating than that. So I hope that this has sunk into your mindscape or that you have now like said, oh, this is really important and have taken it to heart. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up because that helps boost my videos. And what helps my videos boost even more is if you give me a comment and I will respond. Ask me a question. I will tell you my knowledge uh, as best as I can. And uh, also, if there's any other videos, subjects you want me to cover, then please put that down in the comments as well. And be more than happy to share. All right, this is Garrett. I hope you have an awesome day. Happy CNC machining. I will talk to you next time.